this video I want to talk about the three classical orders and that they are actually not what people mostly think about. So on this slide in the book that I used before from Robert Chitham, about, I, I can link it in the description, it's, um, he show five orders. So on, the, on this one we see the most common three orders, right? Doric, Ionic and Corinthian. But he display also the Tuscan order as an even lower one than the Doric, which is not often so often uses the others and he also display the composite so but let's look on these three orders and actually he also used the, the Roman Doric order so there it derived the Roman Doric one has a has a basis right and it, it develops from the from the Greek Doric order um, which we see on another slide later but as you can see it's I don't like the term order first of all because the question what does it order I mean what does it put in order so it's basically a, a com a, it's basically a column with a capital that matches to an entablature so it's basically a designed entablature that matches to a column or the column matches to an entablature and this is the this is the way how it's usually displayed in every architecture book right and that makes it already like um, a bit mystic because it's like you think like oh it really must be exactly like that and mostly the the columns were also applied in history exactly in this way more or less with modifications but if we rescale it like that and and put them all in the same height there's actually not so much difference right you see the proportions are similar so it's also the idealized form that Robert Shittim displays here in his book so but still the, the proportions are more or less similar so it's just like he is still a di uh, Doric, Ionic and Corinthian, right? And I scale it proportionally. So as you can see, I didn't like make it longer or something. And as you can see, like moving the, the, the orders upwards, the proportion of the, of the base and also the proportion mainly of the column to and the entablature to each other are still like he displayed exactly the same, but also in history, they're mostly very similar. So it's like not a big not that big different what what happens is that the column become like thinner the higher the order is so if i display the task in here too it would be even thicker so you can see a slight di a slight difference you see a difference in the thickness of the doric ionic and corinthian column itself but the proportion of the entablature and also the system is still like similar right we have the architrave the lower the lower part here in the ionic column i showed with the mouse um this is actually displaying the real beam so they also like ionic columns in in greek times that didn't have the second part the frieze which is here left blank but with which often on this drawing but which often has like a um like a decoration some decoration elements right the frieze the second part and then we have the top part which like is already the base of the roof so these three parts are all similar and the proportion are not too different so the doric uh, uh, order has a, a plain architrave and then these very specific elements like metopen and tri triglyphen which display like or which which should show like beams coming out and there's a lot of development about this corner conflict in the Doric column in the Greek times right that you probably learned about in architecture history but the proportion of architrave frieze and the upper part are pretty similar so what happens as we can see the the columns become thicker so if we look on more advanced display so this one is from an architecture um, history book from the or architecture theory book from 19th century there you see different versions of the ionic order already and also taken from from actual buildings like some corinthian columns and see it looks like a big science already and very difficult what what's happened here he d does not display the tuscan and the doric the greek sorry the Dome roman doric order he displayed the greek doric order and shows also the development from the early temples let's here say pestum on the left one which is like really heavy already and like where it looks more like yeah looks more like less elegant and it developed like towards a more st straight tied up version so the Parthenon is in the middle right the, the famous one and then it becomes even more slim and elegant towards but this is really the, so the Doric columns is shown here in the development over time so it becomes more slim and elegant and so actually you could think the Ionic order follows later but I mean it's not true there, there were always like Ionic columns not always but there were Ionic columns already while the Doric existed so it's not it's not the successor of the Doric right but it was always it has always been that slim and actually historically the 
The Corinthian column is an ionic column that just has the capital exchanged. And as you can see here, the capital of the Corinthian column is higher. So that makes the column actually higher and more slim. And then it was like a bit enhanced later, as you can see here. So the, the column is even more slim. But also, if we take the, the most common three ones here, now we have the Greek Doric, not, not as before the Roman Doric in this uh, page, and Ionic and Corinthian. And we rescale it, ta-da, it's like, again, pretty similar. I mean, the, the column becomes thicker, that's the main difference. And of course, there's another entablature, because, as I said before, uh, order, what's called the three order, Doric, Ionic, Corinthian, right, is mainly a, a, a column with a matching um, entablature. And as you can see here also, the <coughs> historically, the Corinthian order, which is not an order, it's an Ionic column with another capital, which is a bit higher than... Uh, never developed their own entablature. So it's uh, the, the the system of the entablature with the Akita frieze uh, is is the same in Corinthian and Ionic order. It's just like often displayed richer than in the Ionic order. But as you can see on this one, in these those examples, even the Ionic one has more detailed decoration. So, and by the way, the me measurement system is always the one. So, so the basic measurement is this one of the lower column, right? And then it's set in proportion to the height, which, by the way, goes until here, until the bottom of the architrave, and not until here or somewhere. And then there's the a proportion system for the entablature too. But as you can see here already, Ionic and Corinthian are pretty similar, right? The 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 proportion between the height of the column and the height of the entablature is actually similar. It's like, by the way, usually like 25% on top. So if you have, let's say, 10 meter for the for the column, you would put around 2 meter 50 entablature on top. So pretty similar. And But as you can see, the column become like thicker. <coughs> I mean, comparing these three orders. So the column is thicker in its proportion. So, and but to be fair, if we, if we see the continue, as the development of the Doric order itself, like on this slide, I just like scale it proportionally, right? I, uh, then you can see the entablature has been heavier at the beginning, so up to like 35, I think even like 38 percent of the height. So that means if we had a ionic, uh, sorry, a Doric column at the beginning of the history of the development of this system, I don't want to call order, of the system, then you would s would have like 10 meter column height and like 3 or 4 meter on top, so much heavier. And it become more slim. So to be fair, there's a change in the proportion over time, but as we can see here, in the final development, not that big difference. So uh, it's not that mystic as is usually like displayed. I don't know. I mean, they probably. Th I mean, I never saw any architecture history book where they where they draw it like that or architecture theory book. Probably because it becomes so simple and like um, I think more easy to understand, right? And here I oversimplified this like in a three D model. To be fair, I I have ignored the the capital height because it didn't look good with the with a higher Corinthian capital here. So I always have the capital in the proportion of the Ionic, which is um, half a lower diameter. So if this is a lower diameter, the co Ionic capital is usually half a lower diameter. And I applied this to dior uh, Doric, Roman Doric proportion, which is 1 to 8. Ionic proportion, roughly run 1 to 9 after Robert Chittam, and 1 to 10 for the Corinthian in a simplified version. And even if this plane columns, which I kind of like, if we so this is the the basic reduction of the column system. If we rescale it, so it's like you see it clearly now the column becomes slimmer towards the order. So that's the the classical proportion, as after in the theory book from nineteenth century, from Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian. Right? Tada! So it's actually not that mystic as as it's usually displayed in in, in architecture history books. And I added a few more pictures to show like how different columns can look like. So this is the Egyptian um, Egyptian temple. And here you can see, of course, it's not that tech. E Egyptian architecture is not that tectonic. As you can see, the, the architrave is not like worked out. It's, it's not really tectonic as the Greek system. And of course, it's much earlier. But it's like here you can see like how different columns can look like too. All these, yeah totally different, I think it's the Karnak temple, um, totally different design and the floral design. It's, it looks, it's comes from a flower impression, right? But it's, it's the most tectonic element carrying the roof. 
So that's that what makes Exigium architecture so great. The mix of like very geometric elements and like very floral organic forms. And of course those Minoi columns where you can see well you see already in the entablature the basis of what becomes the Roman uh, sorry sorry the, the Greek entablature later, right? The architrave here which symbolize which is actually the actual beam and then a free zone which has so there's a reconstruction on site of uh, of uh, King Palace in uh, in Knossos and you see this very pure freeze decoration which was probably like that I mean there's a reconstruction here and you see this basic this so the basic three parts of the archit of the entablature already and then the ionic uh, sorry the, the minoi columns were like even inverted so they were slimmer on the bottom and thick on the top which is like an atectonic so but you have already the main elements like the capital and here the plinte which always have to stand out by the way so the architrave has to lay over this point here of the big of the top of the capital same like in uh, so that's the same like in greek orders and the plinte have to look out sometime like contemporary architects who want to do like columns like nowadays they do that wrong and they they don't think the right section of so they they make the plinter meeting the architrave but it has actually to stand out in the in the section so just to show you some pictures how different columns can look like so it's not it's not so strict as it's always like taught in like theory I th architecture theory as i think and then as you can see i showed this pictures in another lecture before so you can it can de develop to even slimmer columns like this is 1920s and uh or, or early 30s so so it become like even slimmer and the, and but if you make the column slimmer usually the entablature becomes more slim so this is the the continuity of this this classical system if you add here a thick entablature it will look weird at the same time you usually make the 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 distances between the columns more narrow the slimmer the columns are so if you want slim columns you you probably make more narrow uh gaps between the columns and the slim slimmer um entablature or then this very abstract system right of the ur uh, sorry no, it's not the ur it's the university in rome la sapienza in the mussolini era so where where it's just like a very high it's not even a column it's like it's it's very abstract translation of the system right but you can see this 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 line here actually represents the separation of the original architrave so this is kind of the architrave system and where the name is written is the fries so the whole part would be the entablature. So it's it's taken the, the, the Greek systems and translated to a very abstract form, right? So all I want to say, it's not that difficult. First of all, these, these three classical orders, or five or however how much you ever want to count. I mean, how, how detailed you want to count it. But mostly it's taught as three. Actually, it's five plus the Greek uh, Doric, so actually six. Um, it's not that difficult as it's usually taught and it's pretty simple and, and you can actually freestyle no, I don't want to say you freestyle but but it's like it's not that difficult as it's usually taught that's what I want to say thank you